Le Stewart. Le. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Stewart, and I'm back. And it's actually the same day that I filmed the previous video, which is funny because I ate until like I was stuffed earlier, and so I felt like doing a sweet video, which I hinted at in my last video at the end, uh, because I'm a big dessert person, and when I'm not on a diet, I like to eat sweets right after every meal, or if I can, and uh, so I thought this was a good time, and I actually already opened two of these because <laughs> I was uh, really craving it, so I just thought, well, why not, since uh, I'm already here and I have everything ready, uh, as I said in my last video. So, uh, without further ado, let me show you guys up close exactly what I have. I'm not going to be using my uh, extra camera uh, in this video, uh, just because it's a little bit more complicated and I thought this is more of a simple thing and I can show you guys just by raising it up to the uh, main camera. So let's do this. So let's go with one of the older snacks. This is actually a red bean candy bar. It's Korean. Let's show you the Korean side. There you go. So it's just a red bean paste that's uh, sweet and it's in the shape of a long stick as you can see from the, the box shape. So I'll put this over here. Next another really old one that uh, I used to eat, I think this is, I have the oldest memories with this candy. It says Botan Rice Candy above that little picture right there. and. As I said, I think I have the earliest memories with this candy. I remember there was a really old Korean market near uh, my parents' house when I was a kid, and I remember my parents uh, buying this for me whenever we went there. And the cool thing is, well, the candy is cool by itself, but you also get like a sticker or like a tattoo, a cheap little tattoo thing uh, inside every box, and it's random, so you never know what you're going to get. So I'm excited to uh, show that to you guys soon. Uh, next, going in order, I got green tea Pocky sticks. I'm pretty sure y'all are familiar with Pocky. It's a uh, famous Japanese candy and it's green tea flavored. Usually the ones you see are chocolate. Um, and then I got another one, this is uh, Pepito, which is um, known to be the Korean version of Pocky, but I heard that Lotte is actually um, a Japanese company, but it's marketed as a as a Korean company. But I'm not exactly sure about that. I might be wrong. I got the white chocolate. It's more of like a cookies and cream, as you can see from the picture, but it's called white chocolate on the box. And I don't believe I've tried these two pictures. Uh, flavors, I say pictures. I haven't tried those flavors before, so I'm excited to do that today with you guys. Um, this is another snack that... This is one snack that I actually haven't ate often, actually. The last time, or the main memory I have with this is... Uh, I had a friend... Um, I mean, we met... In elementary school and I believe that's when I first went over to his uh, his parents place's house and I remember he's Korean by the way and his uh, parents are Korean and uh, they have this at his house and I remember trying it so that's my first memory with this snack it was actually I guess it's kind of recent well then no it was in elementary school, never mind. It wasn't recent, but uh, that's my first memory. And actually, since then, I've only had this a handful of times. But when I went to the market earlier today, uh, and for some reason, I wanted to eat that. This is one that I tried recently within the past year. It's uh, sweet and spicy. It's supposed to be dokboki, like in my last video, um, as you can see from the picture on the bottom. 
but it's actually pretty sweet and uh, it's really nice. I like it a lot. It's really crunchy. And the one that I just opened earlier is a sweet potato chip. It's my first time having it today, but man, is it good. It's not really a uh, potato -y, sweet potato -y. it just tastes like honey, like a sweet honey chip. This snack is one that my grandfather actually really likes. Uh, he likes a lot of these old-fashioned snacks. Well, not these ones. These ones are not old-fashioned, but uh, things like this or like uh, nuts, things like that. So as you can see, they're hot wasabi peas. Usually there's a different brand that I get, but uh, this is all they had at the store. And yeah, they're supposed to be I mean, I'll show you guys. I'll go, uh, I won't go exactly back in this order, I think, because I want to get to the sweet stuff quickly. But uh, let me show you what this is. So inside of here, uh, obviously there's a seal, but I took it off because I ate some. And inside, uh, there's a bunch of green peas. And they're coated with something. Uh, let me grab a few. So. It zooms up a little bit better for you guys. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So it looks like that. And they're really crunchy and really hard. Uh, and they're coated with wasabi. And the thing is about this, uh, this snack is that sometimes you get ones that are really, really coated with, with wasabi, and then other ones that are really mild and benign. That don't have like really any wasabi at all. So sometimes you get a kind of a nasty surprise with the snack. But it's definitely nice, and uh, I think it's a snack that you get used to and you learn to love. I haven't really got an overly spicy one yet. That one had some kick. That one had some kick. The thing is, is that right after I, I ate all that food in my last video, I went on Netflix, I watched a couple episodes of this new show that I'm watching called Terrace House. It's uh... I usually don't watch uh, foreign or like non-American shows or movies but it's a show sponsored by Netflix but it's in Japan and it's kind of like I mean it is a reality TV show and there's three guys and three girls in one house and like they're a totally stranger at the, at the beginning of the show and each episode uh, shows their interactions week by week and like if they fight or they like get closer to each other if, like, go, if they go on dates or just really uh, things that happen in their lives and uh, each individual is so different that it makes for a really good, really good show, and I like it a lot. So basically, as I was telling you guys, I watched that for, watched a couple episodes of that show, and then right after that, I laid on bed in my bed. You can kind of see because my pillows out and like my blankets over there, and. Uh, I laid there for a while and I think I just ended up falling asleep for, what was it, maybe like an hour or so. Which is weird because right now, um, while I'm film filming this video, it's 11.05. So, yeah, that sounds about right. 
fell asleep for an hour or so and then now I woke up and just felt like snacking on something so <laughs> that's why I'm making this video for you guys. I feel like it's a little bit more of a relaxed uh, atmosphere in this video. I'm just talking to you guys and not really worrying about too much. Um, so yeah, let's move back on to the one before this called the Sweet Potato Man. Alchan Goguma. That's a text under it. Let me show you an uh, in-bag shot. I'm not sure if that will work that well. No, that doesn't really work that well. <laughs> I'll do the same thing. I'll uh, take a handful and I'll top while I uh, munch on this. So that's what it's like. It kind of looks like french fries somewhat. But it's like ridged, kind of like it's kind of hard for you guys to see. But it's each part is individually ridged, kind of like a waffle. Other than that, there's no like special sesame seeds or anything on it. From what I can perceive as an outsider of like someone who just eats Korean snacks. Korean people tend to like... I feel like there's more sweet chips than there are salty. Which is kind of strange. But I like it because I mean I love sweet stuff. And maybe that's my Korean side talking right now. But chips are usually sweet on the sweeter end and cream chips usually have a really good uh, bite to them like they're all really crunchy speaking of uh, popular or famous cream chips there were the honey butter chips at the store that I went to earlier today but uh, I didn't really feel like it because I tried it uh, I think maybe like three or four times uh, since it became really really popular and it just tasted like a cheap chip like it didn't really taste that great to me ooh that piece was uh, extra honey honey so after I finished um, filming the video, oh yeah, I I went and uh, I was going to edit the video, but before that, I wanted to take all of the footage from my phone and put it onto my computer, right? Because obviously I filmed the close-up stuff with my phone, as you guys saw. And I was trying to do it through Google Drive, but for some reason I wasn't uploading from my camera onto there. Which was really annoying, so... I need to figure that out so I can edit, start editing that video right away for you guys. This is really good. I want to eat some of that later. Now I think what I want to do is just kind of do a taste test of each one. Just uh, as I was doing with uh, these two so far. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't want to... I definitely know my limits right now. <laughs> because I ate so much right before. Oh, my hands are uh, oily. Oh, this one has the ridges to uh, rip it. I actually don't like to rip it like this because 
it's hard to in my opinion it's harder to seal or close if you want to eat it later on but some bag just make it so dang difficult to uh, do it, open it the way that I like to open it see because once you rip it it's kind of like a never-ending cycle or like rip and it just won't stop if you accidentally like pull it in the wrong way but I guess I'm gonna have to do that today because this bag is uh, <laughs> not cooperating you know what, I'll try giving you guys like in bag look one more time and if it's not working then yeah it's not working <laughs> Anyways, it was this, the spicy duck bookie one. I'll lay it like that so you guys can uh, see it if you want. And, uh, oh, I'm going out. So, uh, the way it's coming out on the, through the webcam, it kind of looks like cheese sticks. They're definitely not orange, they're red in color. Uh, it's just because of the lighting right now, so uh, keep that in mind. But like the other snack, Actually, there's some red bits. I think it might be to like simulate or to uh, not to simulate, to imitate uh, the dried seaweed that you sometimes get on Dokuki. Or it could be like the roasted sesame seeds, but I don't think so. As you can hear, this is the crunchiest out of all of them. It's even crunchier than the wasabi peas. The uh, spiciness starts to kick in, sucking a third piece in. But it's a spiciness that comes with uh, obviously the sweetness of the snack, which is really nice. I feel like I'm doing actually pretty well articulating each snack and uh, my memories uh, of each of them and, and what they taste like. I'm actually kind of quite happy with myself right now. <laughs> and I think this is a video where I'm actually not going to do at, uh, any cuts at all. I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. But it says I've been recording for 18 minutes, so I don't know. I feel like it's worth it though. I've been talking the whole time. It's not like... In some of my other videos... Well, originally, the, first, the re original reason why... Part of the reason why I uh, chose to uh, cut my videos, uh, as you guys have seen for like the past 12, 12 of them... Um, one reason is because sometimes there's awkward silences or there used to be awkward silences in my videos like when I first started making them because it was just different, you know, having a one-way conversation looking into a webcam, uh, you know, versus obviously being in person. So at the beginning, it was definitely hard to do that. But now it's fine and like you guys can see that, you know, I've been talking this whole, what, 19 minutes and, uh, so I'm perfectly fine. That's one reason why I chose to do a short few minute video with a lot of cuts. The second reason is I thought, I mean, I've been watching uh, mukbang videos for the past year and a half, I'd say. And most people, what they do, I mean, 99% of the people they just post the whole you know 30 minute video of them eating and that's fine but what I saw the pattern was I didn't want my channel to be exactly just about food porn or like just me or you guys like looking at like this really nice food and 
watching me eating this really nice food and enjoying it and that's fine and all and if you're here to do that like more power to you like if that's your derogative then like you be you man but what I wanted my channel to be at least uh, when I first started it was or is a channel that focuses around my personality and a place for me to tell you guys exactly who I am and like what kind of person I am and over time like over you know these videos that I make every week or two videos that I make every week uh, starting now uh, for you guys to get to know me slowly and slowly bit by bit and uh, obviously a lot of it is like me showing off my uh, my funny side and that's not like who I am like on a day-to-day -day basis like the way I'm talking to you guys right now is more of my actual personality I mean this is my actual personality the way I'm talking to you guys right now uh, so yeah that's what I wanted my channel to be like even if I ended up branching out and doing things that were not related to food which I'm kind of doing now I'm doing I want to do I'm going to start doing vlogs and stuff like that uh, it's all about like who I am it's not about just the food and the things I present to you guys so that's my thought process of, uh, of my channel and actually <laughs> speaking of branching out and doing new things I actually filmed, uh, me and my friends have been playing Overwatch, oh gosh, I just, this is what happens <laughs> when I talk and open the bag at the same time, whoa, these are really big, I don't remember them being this huge, They're bigger than uh, cheese curls, right, I, got, I gotta put a few in my hand to show you guys, you know, the perspective of how big these are, oh my gosh, Yeah, that's like five puffs, and that's like filling up my whole hand. Look at that, that's the size of my finger, size of my thumb. Yeah, this is exactly how I remember them. Like, they literally just melt in your mouth like cotton candy. It's really airy, but it has a really distinct and sharp banana f uh, flavor. That's a, uh, it's a, you know how e each country has like a different sort of artificial um, fruit flavor. This is like Korea's version of the banana, banana flavor, obviously, and I really like it. No, I was going to say that this is probably, I thought this flavor, this banana flavor in particular, is just like, like if you see those cheap uh, candy vending machines where it has like the banana, the apple and grape little like tart things, it's, I was going to say it tastes like this, but I don't, can't be sure because I haven't had that in a really long time. What was I saying before I opened this bag? Darn it. This is another <laughs> classic me problem when I uh, am with friends. Whenever I'm talking, like I'll get distracted like doing something like that or I, I would go off on a tangent and talk about something else that like just pops in my mind because uh, I don't want to like lose that, that thought for that moment. So I go off in, onto a tangent and then I forget exactly what I was talking about like a minute ago. <laughs> and uh, I usually have to ask my friends uh, or whoever I'm with uh, what I was talking about to uh, get back to it. Oh yeah, 
I was saying that me and my friends play Overwatch. I've started playing it. We're actually in, or I was in, maybe like three, four of the closed betas before it released. So I've had quite a bit of bit of exposure to the game prior to the release and post release. Me and my friends have been playing it, you know, pretty much every day, day to day. And it's funny because I've met. There were times when it was just me on and one of my friends I actually know, and so I joined his party of of five friends, and then so I get to know those five people or those four other people, uh, friends of my friends, and. Uh, I ended up adding them as friends online, and so I play with them sometimes, and then the same thing happens where I play with him, like the friend of the friend, like my new friend, and then he invites his friends, and like they're not even in the same state that I'm in, like they're in Florida, and like it's kind of funny, like through this game I've gotten to know like so many new people that like I probably won't ever meet in my life, maybe just once or twice, if I ever happen to go to Florida or they happen to come over here. Uh, so it's just kind of funny to reflect on that and like see how, you know, just no having one friend can lead to like knowing so many different other people, you know, down the line. And I guess uh, the, the moral of the story is, you know, networking is important. Like, like outside of games, like in general for your profession or for whatever, you know, like you'll be surprised what kind of people that you meet by knowing one person. So, so yeah, value, value the people that you know and don't be afraid to spread your wings per se and like get to know everyone because it's definitely not going to hurt you in the long run. It's going to... It's definitely going to help you knowing more people. So with that said, let's uh, move on to the next few candies. It's already been 27 minutes and counting. Uh, but I definitely feel like it's been entertaining on my end talking to you guys. So let's go on to the... It's called white chocolate, but as I said, it's cookies and cream. It's a one big package. I thought it would have been maybe two separate ones. So let's open it. And it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> ten pet pedal sticks. Ooh, this is pretty good. There's let me take out a few. So that's what it looks like. It tastes like they put a little bit of uh, coconut in this. Yeah, like they use the coconut base for the white chocolate uh, sauce. This is really good. This is a better than I expected. And if you guys didn't know, there's a, uh, um, most, how do I say this, people in Asia, in most Asian countries, let's say, or maybe just Japan and Korea, uh, they have a thing called Pocky Game, where, uh, you do it with someone you like, or like, someone that you're, you're getting, you have a crush on. I mean, definitely someone where you know they kind of like you too, because it would be kind of awkward, but they both put their mouth on uh, each person, 
puts their mouth on each end of the pocky stick and they like it's kind of like the <sighs> what movie was it the uh damsel <laughs> it's the, the the cartoon movie that came out when i was a kid in like the 90s about two dogs and they were eating pasta like outside of in the alleyway or whatever of a uh, of an Italian restaurant, and they have a bowl of pasta, and they're like both slurping one, one the same noodle, and they eventually like get together and like they, they kiss at the end, type of thing. So it's the, it's the same concept. So if there's someone on this side, and I was on this side, then we both put our mouth on uh, the opposite ends, and then we chew. You know, obviously until we get close enough, and like, obviously most people they chicken out and they they let go and they don't kiss, but. You know, it's, it's exciting in that way. And someone just texted me. And I should have uh, put it on silent, so let me do that right now. I'm sorry, whoever you are. You have to wait a little bit more. Almost done. I kind of like this. I think I'm going to name this video some of my favorite snacks, or maybe just like. Hmm. Oh, it should be called Stu Stuart Snacks, and it should be like new, a new wave of videos. Stuart Snacks Part One or Chapter One, something like that. Um, I was originally going to do like my favorite snacks sort of video. But there's a bunch of like new ones or things that I wanted to revisit because they reminded me of things when I uh, was at the sh uh, at the store like this one with my friend and uh, when I was a kid. So I think instead of doing just a Korean snack video and then a Japanese snack video or a Chinese snack video, I'll just do a snack collection and I'll try to buy new snacks every time. Uh, I think I really enjoy this because. Uh, if I haven't made it clear enough already, I really like sweet stuff. And it's easy because I can talk about each one as I go through it. Definitely going to be eating more of that once the video ends. <laughs> Alright, so now we have Pocky in the green tea flavor. As I said, in these boxes they have a little nice opening here, which I'll do. I'll show you guys for easy storage once you're done with it. I mean, if you have leftovers. So yeah, just opens as such. It's better designed than uh, that box, but at the same time, when you eat Pock, your uh, Pepito. You eat the whole thing, especially if you're with friends. Like, there's definitely not enough for two or three people. My hands are still slippery from the previous snack, so I'm going to have to do what I hate most and and use the little serrated edges to open it. I'm, I'm snapping. I can hear it. I'm snapping some of these sticks. See, and then it never like cuts off clearly when you do this. It's so annoying. Whatever, I guess I'll just leave it. But anyways, it's nice. It's a white package and it has the uh, matcha green tea color. Pull out a few. These ones are definitely, mm, I think they're shorter by a little bit. Uh, the stick diameter is definitely a little bit less than the Korean counterpart. As you can see, man, the color is uh, really, really nice. Really, really nice. So let's, uh, I'm a big fan of green tea, so let's see. 
Oh wow, this sh the uh, scent to this is really nice. Like, this is actually really, really good. If you're a fan of green tea, like actual matcha, and you like the authentic flavor of green tea, then this is what you want. If you're a person that is a casual fan of green tea and you just like the, you don't really know the exact flavor, and if you've had like matcha or green tea bubble tea, usually the flavor is not, I mean I've never had a bubble tea that tasted like the actual tea. So if you've had that and that's your basis of what you think green tea is, I don't think you're going to like this as much. But even Costco, I know that Costco sells not green tea pocky, but uh, green tea tea packets. And I've tried those a couple of times and it tastes just like this. So if you've, if you've had that and you want something a little bit sweeter and that tastes the same, this is, this is it for you. I'll try two at a time. <laughs> Man, the video's already been 37 minutes long. Alright, I gotta speed this up because I don't want... I don't even know uh, if I can upload a 40 minute video to this channel. All right, boats on rice candy. Uh. So it looks like this is the side of the uh, the the packaging that I like. The other side is the little baby with the toy. Um, I'm actually curious. I always thought this was a Chinese candy, so let me see where it was made from. Well, it's actually a product of Japan. So, I'm assuming this is Japanese. Yeah, the more you know. So, as you open, it's a nice packaging. The pack packaging has stayed the same ever since I was a kid. I'm pretty sure this is exactly how it looked when it first came out. And, perfectly sized little wrappers just like this let me get one more just like that okay and put it down you open it and each one is wrapped in a plastic wrapper and each one is wrapped in a thin rice paper wrapper as well so once you take off the plastic, you don't take off the rice paper. It's stuck onto there. What happens, I'll rip it off since there's excess on this one. See this? It just melts in your mouth. So you're meant to eat this, if you guys did not know. You just put the whole thing in your mouth and it's like chewy. If you want to chew it, or you can just let it um, dissolve in your mouth. But it's chewy just like a Mike and Ike. The whole thing's made out of rice. And it has a distinct flavor to it. Whatever Botan is. Maybe that's not even a thing. And it's the name of the company, who knows. Let's see uh, what sticker I got. <laughs> I actually really like this. <laughs> it's like a moose on, and it's like floating on top of a skateboard. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. <laughs> that's really funny. What the heck. <laughs> Anyways, I won't eat the second piece of the candy because this video is getting too long. It's already 40 minutes. 
And I know I've been uh, hammering down to you guys how long this video is taking, but uh, I'm enjoying myself. It's just I'm worried about if I can upload this or not. So let's move on to the Korean old school red bean stick candy. And I'm sure my grandpa likes this too. Uh, obviously, it's nostalgic for him, but uh, the flavor is actually nice. And I think if, if I was in Korea, it has really nice wrapping, by the way. It's like shining gold. If I was in Korea and I had Korean friends, they'd probably make fun of me for liking something like this, I think. Because I think it's an old person snack, from what I can tell. So, you undo the paper wrapping. And it's kind of like a burrito. You want to open from the top and, and open it. Open it as you eat it. Kind of like a deal. And that rubber fell. Uh, normally I don't open it this much. I'm just trying to show you guys. <laughs> but it looks like... Okay, my desk is getting to be a mess, so... Happy this is the last one. So as you can see, the, the color... Uh, it kind of looks black, but it's actually really, really dark red. Actually, it's red bean and it's like it you see this it it bends so the texture is a soft jelly as the uh, as I implied and it's just a sweet red bean it's a nice snack really year-round This stuff is really good. Anyways, I won't eat the rest. And I'll eat it once this video is over. But then again, you know, speaking of ending the video, it's been a real 42 minutes with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I don't plan on editing this video. I want to keep it exactly how it is. Uh, part of because I just I thought this was a great experience like throughout and I want to do more things where I don't cut the video uh, to practice uh, communicating in that way also I'm at the point where I can do this and just keep on like continuously talk uh, in a one-way conversation to the camera to you guys uh, so I want to keep on doing that but I also want to have the short videos and I feel like in the short videos those are going to be the times when I'm going to, you know, show uh, my funny side, obviously, and do funny things. And these longer style videos are going to be more of uh, exactly who I am right now, like my real personality. So that's my plans. And on top of that, uh, I will be doing vlogs, and I think I'm going to res reserve those as of right now um, for when I go to like a special restaurant or place to eat. Uh, with the people in my life so I'll do that for now and then once I get familiar and comfortable doing that I'll start actually you know, vlogging so instead of just having this on a table my phone inside of here I'll actually be holding it or I'll get another device to hold it and bring it around you know and just talk into the camera show you guys exactly what I'm doing or some of the things I'm doing in my life so those are what to expect in my channel in the uh, coming next two months now that I'm in summer mode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll definitely see you guys very soon in my next video.